if you're working on a very, very large environment where you have web servers that thousands of people are connecting to, you have huge numbers of database servers that you're providing, you're usually not doing that with a single computer. You usually have a number of web servers set up and a number of database servers set up, and you're sharing the load across all of those. So if you're building out a big server farm, you're providing services for other people to access, you're probably going to use some type of load balancing to be able to make that happen. You simply load up multiple servers that all look relatively identical to each other, and then you have a single load serving device that is balancing that across those connections. Those load balancers are very, very intelligent devices that can then split those loads over these different devices that you have in your environment. And the benefit, of course, to the end user is they don't even know it's there. It's completely invisible. They think they're talking to a single server, but but they may be talking to just one of many servers that might be in an entire load balancing farm. This also provides you with some fault tolerance. If you have 10 identical servers that are providing this content, then it's very easy for you to simply lose one of them. You've got nine servers left. It loses a power supply. The hard drive goes bad. That's OK. You're still up and running. And load balancers are very, very intelligent. They can tell very quickly if a device is no longer communicating. And if you lose that power supply or you lose that hard drive, the load balancer automatically removes that from the list. And now it's using the remaining nine devices to still provide services for the end users. One of the more common ways to use a load balancer is to have traffic coming from the internet going to a load balancer that then is distributing the load between four different servers. And obviously, you can configure this load. If one server is more powerful than another, you can adjust exactly how much is going to be managed across all of those servers. These load balancers can also do something called TCP offloading. If you recall, whenever you're setting up a TCP connection, there's a handshake that has to take place. And if every time this load balancer was connecting to these devices, it had to do a handshake, well, then there's a little more overhead head associated with those transactions. What load balancers will tend to do is simply set up a single connection and then use that connection all the time. It's not constantly setting up handshakes and take, tearing down those connections again. It's simply getting it running and leaving it up the entire time. These load balancers are also specialized pieces of hardware that are usually designed to do SSL offloading. So instead of having these individual servers manage the encryption and decryption process, which involves a lot of overhead and a a lot of CPU cycles, you can have a specialized device like a load balancer have specialized hardware inside of it that's designed to do the SSL decryption. So you'll be doing an SSL all the way encrypted into the load balancer, and all of the rest of the communication is going to be in plain text. You also have caching that's built into a number of these load balancers. So the load balancer doesn't even necessarily have to ask for that information from a server. It can simply respond back because it's cached the most common requests right in the load balancer itself. You also have some advanced capabilities of these devices like prioritization. You may have one service running at a different priority than another service so that you can make sure the most important things are getting through the network and the less important things are having a lower priority off to the side. And lastly, you have a feature called content switching, which is going to be able to provide you with a balancing of applications across this. The load balancer is going to be able to tell what application you're asking for. Certain applications may only use servers A and B. Other applications may be using C and D. And other applications might be using A and D. And it depends on how you configure the load balancer. But now you've got a lot of different options available for administering and managing the services that you're going to provide for your end users.